Hello, everyone. We're back. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Daniel. Okay. Hello to everyone else. Love to see the many faces in the crowd. Um, let's give it a few minutes before we truly start. Appreciate everyone being here. We could um, so for the for the teammates up here, you could you could click on speak on stage uh, if you'd like. Um, otherwise, there will also be some teammates in the audience, and we'll definitely get some uh, some time for the community to speak as well towards the end, um, or much sooner than the end. Actually, we'll like to spend more time on questions, um, so we will pass the mic around. One thing to note is I think we're going to record it again. Uh, I'm not sure if it's already being recorded, Dave. Can you give us the uh, the signal? Uh, yeah, I just set it up. Uh, I think that it's it's all working now. So, yeah. Okay, great. So, as we mentioned last time, we'll we'll put the video up on uh, on YouTube. If if you are not comfortable with your uh, avatar uh, showing up on on a video, then uh, please feel free to um, I, yeah, I guess then just be, be aware of that. Um, I don't know if there's a way that you could listen in without being uh, seen in, in the audience. So just want to respect everyone's privacy. Right. All right, let's give it another minute and then we could begin for real. We have some of the new teammates on, uh, on stage, um, many other new ones in the crowd as well. Um, again, if you'd, like to, if you'd like to be able to speak, teammates, please click the speak button and um, then we'll be able to, uh, to tag you in. See some of the all-star mods in the crowd. You guys are awesome. I see uh, the, the one uh, official Umedi Ambassador, Tycho Tuesday. Um, we'd like to, to let everyone speak, um, so we'll get that going. Nearly 500 people. It's exciting, guys. All right. As a reminder, we have the community call questions uh, channel under the community section in Discord. Um, we will try to go through as many questions as possible. You could keep writing them there, or you could keep it for, uh, for a live question. Um, we'll bring up, uh, you, you could raise your hand or request to speak. We'll, we'll pass it to you. Um, so yeah, write it in the chat or keep it for the live part. Um, oh, I see a lot of new questions coming in. Let's try to keep an eye on those, uh, Dave and Ben and, and everyone. Um, some good ones coming in that we might miss. Okay, let's get it started. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, there's lots you can be doing. There's no shortage of uh, things to keep track of 
these days in crypto land, in Ethereum land, even in roll up land itself. But uh, you're here with us, so thank you very much. Um, this is community call number two. The first one was back in December after the first uh, testnet, Alpha One. Here we are with the second one. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we're open to modify the format and the timing uh, as the community best sees fit, maybe more frequently, maybe only around these, uh, these bigger milestones, these test nets. Um, but thanks everyone really for being here. Um, the brief agenda, it'll be similar to last time, but hopefully less, less talking from us and more uh, talking from you guys or, or taking questions. So we'll again just do a, a brief domain overview, the different pieces of the protocol and system, um, and then what each of those domains are working on right now, and what's kind of the next big thing that they're focusing on. Uh, we'll get hopefully a few teammates from each section to speak on that. Um, we'll go over the uh, uh, the testnet overview. Um, Dave will will give a, a brief overview, although I know many of you are already pros and participating, proving, node running, transacting. So we'll we'll do that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some events that are upcoming, uh, in-person events or, or virtual events. Um, a quick look at some future milestones, and then right into the Q and A. So uh, really, let's let's get right to it, and um, yeah, let's start it up. So usually we start when we do our uh, our internal overviews with uh, the zk team um, with some updates. So I would like to pass to Brecht. Uh, many of you know Brecht as the resident uh, ZK lead. Um, so he could give you a, a bit of a sense of what the, the ZK team is, is doing. Please go ahead, Brecht. I can't hear Brecht, I don't know about you. I think, can anyone hear Brecht? I cannot hear Brecht either. I see his mute button is off. Oh, can you hear me now? Ah, oh, there you are. Uh, okay, so, sorry I messed up on my side. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so Taiko is ZKVM. Uh, so what the ZK team is trying to do is basically prove anything uh, that Ethereum also does. So it do doesn't limit itself to just like proving the EVM. We're also trying to prove everything that the EVM uh, kind of like directly or indirectly depends upon. Um, so we're trying to yeah also prove like uh, all the signatures, uh, like ETDSA signatures, uh, also the MPT uh, way, uh, like the MPT for storing data in smart contracts. Uh, and like also all kind of like all the all the pre compiles uh, kind of like the specialized uh, code that's more efficient on Ethereum. Uh, we also are planning on uh, supporting all of those as well. Um, so yeah, it's quite a lot of like uh, implementation work to yeah translate the problem into like yeah what what's normally just done on uh, like an Ethereum node. Uh, we kind of like have to translate that code into something that can be uh, proven by a, a zero knowledge proof. Uh, which it, like it, it's called like circuits. Um, so we kind of like translate all this code into circuits uh, that we can then use to to verify uh, like all the state transitions that are happening in the Ethereum block. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like sketches what we're trying to do uh, like very shortly. And so like the the things that we've been working on and will be working on uh, is kind of like yeah, it's kind of like a different parts I guess from the Ethereum. So we're still working on some kind of like, like core parts of Ethereum. Um, so like uh, I guess some basic things that need to be able to be proven. Um, so we're currently focused on, on things like the, the Blake 2F uh, pre-compile smart contract uh, and some, some like a one of six, um, but also like the Merkle Patricia tree um, circuits to be able to yeah verify all these like st storage uh, transitions that, that need to be uh, need to be verified. Uh, we're also like trying to look forward and also like uh, because it's very important for scalability we're also looking into supporting uh, EIP 4844, uh, if I got that correctly. So uh, data sharding, dank sharding, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and so to be able to fully make advantage of that, we have to be able to read from these uh, data blobs in our circuits. Uh, so we have to be able to read 
uh, uh, data from KCG commitments. Um, so we're working on that as well. Uh, and then also like we working on some like Tyco specific things that we need for our protocol. Uh, mostly that's kind of like uh, being able to handle inbound data or like whatever people propose in their blocks, we need to be able to uh, either validate that it's correct or like be able to detect that it's invalid and then we have to be able to skip over it. Um, and like things I like also like for our bridging methods, uh, we have to be able to bring some L1 data to L2 uh, and those kind of like all things need to be uh, yeah, verified by the circuits as well. Um, but that, I think that's that's good enough for a short overview. Awesome, thank you, Brecht. Uh, yeah, as as we know, the, the zk EVM is the heart of a uh, zk EVM in many regards. Uh, it gets a bit confusing, right? The, the zk EVM are the circuits, and but people also call the whole roll-up system zk EVM. Um, I think everyone's starting to get a better understanding, though. So um, yeah, thanks, Brecht, and um, and your whole team and everyone that's that's working on it. Um, there's some some other ZK team members in the in the audience, so shout out to uh, to Alexi working on this same topic, Ruby as well, um, several others. There's a lot of overlap between uh, you know the teams, of course, needing to make sure it all works together. But just want to make sure we have uh, you know give credit to everyone making this possible, uh, even if they don't want to to speak. So thank you guys. Um, we will definitely have a bunch more questions for Brecht, specifically around proving in the Alpha 2 testnet uh, what's going on. Um, there's some hardware questions, GPU questions. So uh, Brecht will certainly be back soon. Um, let's go right into the, uh, the next domain, though, and uh, on, on the client side. So from those on stage, I'd say uh, probably Daniel will be uh, best to speak on that and, and many other client teammates in the stands as well. Um, yes, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello. Okay, great. So I'm going to talk about the client and the protocol. So maybe maybe protocol first, because the client is just trying to you know, cope with the protocol changes. Um, so over the last quarter, I think we uh, try to uh, optimize the protocol um, so with this current test net, this second test net, you don't see the optimization uh, right now, but for the next one, you will see a uh, great optimization. So basically the idea is to uh, make sure we do as much as possible in the circuit instead of in the uh, smart contracts, because although on layer two with smart contracts, the, the gas is, is cheaper, but on layer one, the, the, you know, we still need to pay uh, Ethereum gas. So right now, I think we have a pretty good uh, implementation that which brings uh, the, the gas cost to uh, like like 20,000 um, gas or something. So it's, it's really, um, I, I would say it's a much better protocol implementation than the current one that we are testing in about two tests. Um, I think in the meanwhile, we also, we, we also try to optimize the, the bridge design to make sure the bridge uh, we can only we just need to submit a partial Merkle proof to, uh, to verify the messages, uh, you know, sending around uh, between layer one and layer two. Uh, so uh, in the meanwhile, you know, it's uh, always uh, challenging to figure out a decentralized uh, tokenomics design for the, uh, for the rollup. So we are still working on that. Um, so the, this current version is still the, the old design, I think, uh, or the, maybe in the next uh, couple of months, we are trying to you know, make sure we understand um, you know, all the challenges and then we figure out a solution. Um, so I think from the protocol's perspective, maybe we will see a pretty stable implementation um, by the end of this quarter, I mean, I mean next quarter. Uh, and then we, in, I think the plan is to, for the next test net, uh, due in Q2, we will see a very, uh, different rollup. I would say, you know, um, the, the design principle is still the same, but the implementation is so much better than the current one. Um, people who have tried our bridge, we realize the bridge transaction is too expensive, you know, the, the under transaction is also too expensive. So uh, the next one will be better. Um, 
in the meanwhile, I think uh, we are trying to make sure the client is um, uh, not intrusively uh, changed compared to the uh, you know, layer one implementation. Um, so there will be like custom uh, transaction types for offer transaction. Um, we will also show like uh, a div between our modification, our code base, uh, uh, and the, the Ethereum code base. Um, and as Brett said, you know, uh, um, we tra we try to optimize our protocol for uh, protocol dump sharding. Um, although the, the feature is not ready yet, but the protocol is designed to be, uh, you know, uh, use that feature quickly without much change. Um, yeah, and, and of course, for this testnet, this alpha 2, we are testing the uh, the provers, right? Because we have integrated provers uh, partially uh, uh, with partial ZK uh, coverage uh, in our backend, in our, in our uh, client implementation. Uh, so over time, this coverage will, will go up. Um, the next testnet, I will say, will, you know, both ends, the prover side and the Proving that will both be decentralized and, and permissionless. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything we uh, I want to say. Back to you, Matthew. Thanks, Daniel. Um, that's great. We'll definitely have more questions about uh, protocol and client from the community. So we'll, we'll get right back to you. Maybe we could um, take this time though to introduce two new two. Two new teammates who are on stage, uh, Danny and Fran, who um, have joined. Well, I say new, it's like a constant uh, joining uh, and, and shifting team, but uh, they've joined since the last one uh, in December, but actually much more recently. So um, they work in, in these uh, domains and, uh, and actually a bit on the product and uh, uh, bridge side. But maybe uh, Danny and Fran, you could say, uh, very quick uh, hello intro and uh, what you're working on. I, I could start. Uh, um, am I unmuted? Can everybody hear me? I, you're good. Yeah, good, good. So hi, everyone. Um, well, a short intro about myself. Um, my name is Fram. I'm, I'm from Spain, as you might notice by my strong accent. I'm a, I'm a software engineer with around 16 years of experience in web development, mostly focused on front end. I, I worked uh, in different industries from e commerce to education, transport, financial services. And, and for the last two years, I've been immersed in the crypto industry, being my, my previous company, Kraken Exchange. Um, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty new here. I joined Tyco. Just a few weeks ago, still catching up, but I'm super, super, super excited about this project. Um, I'll be mostly helping on the bridge part, and uh, well, that's uh, that's pretty much me. Uh, Thank you, Fran. Awesome. Uh, we'll hear more from you maybe in a second on on the bridge and uh, other products. Uh, Danny, please go ahead. Thanks, Matt. Uh, hey guys, my name is Daniel uh, as well, but to distinguish you can call me Danny. I have approximately 10 years of uh, experience as a, as a developer. And uh, obviously I have strong interest in the blockchain tech. Uh, I'm obsessed with, with it and sharing Tycho's vision about the, the technology and the future. And uh, I will be working on the protocol and eventually on the on the protocol economic, economics, I think. Uh, look, uh, I just started this Monday, and it's really right how, how guys here at Taiko are like really mega brainy, so I'm beyond grateful that I could join. Uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I'm a regular software developer and family dad by day and a legion by night. I think that's pretty much sums up. Thanks. Matthew, Beautiful. I think we have uh, three, three more new team members in the call, do you know? Um, we have yeah. Ryan. Oh. Uh, we have Ryan yeah. as our DevOps, and Jane as our new uh, UI designer, and uh, Ainer as another uh, circuit engineer. Um, 
maybe we can let them do the introduction next time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, some other teammates in the in the audience and uh, several new ones as well. So uh, yeah, Ryan, Jane, Hainar, uh, maybe next time you'll speak. Of course, we also have Lisa who is on stage um, and new uh, since last time. Uh, she's been here about five or, or six weeks. Many of you will know her because she's been putting out uh, some great writing already and uh, you, you've been interacting with that. So. Um, yeah, maybe Lisa. Instead of waiting for uh, for the ops time, you could just say a few words about what you work on, and uh, we'll we'll get them all done here. He cannot hear you, or I can't at least. It says you're off mute, but yeah, cannot hear. Lisa, not sure. Feel free to keep uh, trying and just cut me off whenever. Um, yeah, I see you're off mute, but we, we can't hear. Um, and thanks, Danny, for, for your intro. Uh, it's honestly super exciting to keep getting uh, the new talent coming in, and you guys are moving the needle uh, with fresh perspectives right away. Um, okay, so back to the agenda. Um, well, we could pass it back to, um, usually we talk now about the bridge, uh, which is one of the, you know, the applications that we, we build on, on top of Tyco, and that involves uh, you know, some of the user interfaces that, that you all are, are interacting with. Um, so maybe we could just have uh, have Fran speak about that a little bit, the bridge um, and uh, other things in that domain. Well, again, I'm I'm pretty new here, so I'm I'm, I'm still catching up. Uh, I've been I've been helping a bit in the in the last release, uh, and. Um, yeah, I have a I have a lot of ideas, uh, um, at least uh, from the UI point of view. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, there is not much I can say at the moment. Uh, maybe maybe there is uh, somebody else with more knowledge since I joined just a few weeks ago that could uh, have a better. I can add some extra content there. So uh, we have. Focusing on engineering, not really the UI or but just like user experience. So, um, people who have tried, uh, tried our first test net will notice the bridge UI is almost the same. Uh, but going forward, I think uh, we are going to do like polish our branding a little bit with the, because Jane is going to onboard uh, soon. I think either onboard it already or soon. <laughs> and the the goal is to really make sure the branding is really really nice and awesome. and then. The whole bridge UI um, will be, even the UX will be redesigned and the UI will be certainly uh, polished. Uh, from engineering perspective, I think the next step for, for bridge is to make sure the Merkle proof uh, library is optimized. So um, the, the layer one, you know, gas footprint is going to be minimized. Um, so that's, I think, the, the number one priority from an engineering perspective. Other than that, I think the bridge is really stable. I, I would say um, uh, the test coverage will uh, still need to catch up a little bit. Um, there will probably be an NFT bridge, but it's not a priority. And we hope other people can give up their own bridge on top of Tyco, so we don't want to compete with third-party bridges. Um, on the other hand, you know, uh, after the Shanghai fork, uh, the the withdrawal route in the bridge will be available. So for Ether uh, to be bridged from layer one to layer two, we may have another approach to uh, to mint Ether directly to users' address instead of you know, pre-mint a lot of stuff, a lot of Ether, and then transfer those Ether to a uh, user's address. So that will be um, some some upgrade uh, to the to the implementation uh, in in the bridge contract. 
Um, and I think other than that, the breeze is really, really relatively easier um, and relatively more like ready. Um, yeah, so so hopefully you enjoy the breeze. Uh, by the way, if you encounter a lot of error or, or failure of transactions in using the breeze, it, it, it may be so by design because we just want to try to uh, make sure some transactions fail and then we have a way to handle those failures. Uh, so if it caused your your, your your trouble and you you know confusion we are sorry for that but it's by design um, yeah so that's pretty much uh, things I want to add to to what uh, Frank just uh, said thanks Daniel and um, and Fran okay so let's let's keep it moving we'll get to the questions very soon probably in the next few minutes the the last domain we usually cover is uh, the ops team but uh, everyone is a bit more familiar with us. Of course, Ben uh, really being super active, running things uh, right here in, in the Discord and with the community. Dave on um, on developer experience. So, you know, we all get to interact uh, a lot more. So we won't have to go over that right now. Um, and Lisa, again, part of that team. Let's check if she uh, has fixed the mic issue. Lisa? Maybe not. All right. Next time. Um, okay. Let's. Oh, I see the mute button move, but uh, still no sound. All right. We'll sort it out. Um, okay. Let's. Uh, well, I actually just as a as an extension of ops, just want to say thank you to. Uh, I mean, honestly, the whole community, but. Several of the, the mods are here, uh, Lepaludi, Blank, um, Bumede as, a, as, a, as an ambassador, um, and honestly many more uh, community members who are so helpful. Um, I don't want to miss any, but Wolf has been super helpful. I see some other faces. Uh, I think one of them was using Dave's uh, tool to build an app. Uh, Miko, Miko, uh, Miko Cola, just... Uh, and again, not not to um, overshadow anybody, but seriously, th this is all. Uh, it's it's so helpful when everybody tests stuff, gives feedback, and just engages. Um, that's that's the big differentiator of of any project. So thank you. Um, you're really all um, part of the the ops team and part of the whole team. So uh, maybe we'll get some of you guys to say a few words if you'd like uh, in just a bit, but. Let's go quickly to uh, to Dave, who could give a, a, a an overview of the test net for those who haven't used it in the last uh, forty eight hours. Let's say. All right, hey, 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 um, you guys can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> I thought I was going to share my screen, but <laughs> I don't think that I can on this team stage, or it's disabled for me. So um, I won't be able to share my screen, but if you'd if you'd like to, you can uh, visit it in your browser as as I explain it, um, and, and go over the documentation. Um, so uh, mainly, if you some of the updates to the documentation now is we really tried to improve like um, some of the uh, core sections. So like we have a section um, like of concepts now. So you might be wondering like. Um, you know, if you look at the white paper, it might be a little bit daunting to you, right? Like I know <laughs> it was for me at times and it can be a lot of information. So you might just be wondering like some simple things like how are blocks actually created on Tyco? What is this validation that we say we derive from the Ethereum yellow paper? Um, what is proving a block? What does a Tyco node actually look like? How do we reuse the execution client? How does bridging work? Um, we're trying to take um, a lot of these concepts from the white paper and instill them into these kind of encapsulated uh, concepts in the documentation. So if you're curious about how Tyco works, of course, like the white paper is a really great place to start. Um, but uh, feel free to just look into our documentation now and um, and we'll continue to improve that. <clears throat> just to improve the education and, and help you guys fully understand uh, how it works. Um, also, that's helpful because you can help us with suggestions and improvements then as well. 
So yeah, that's one uh, one of the sections. The, the other section we have aside from concepts are the guides. And you'll see that um, all of the guides that we have are um, all well-structured. Uh, and you can do them in any order. There's not like any particular order. You, so anything that you want to do in the test net, you can just pull up one of the guides. And each of the guides, along with just some steps to, um, to, to go through and use the test net, they have um, troubleshooting. So if you have like any issue running a node or any issue with uh, swapping um, or um, enabling a prover, things like that, uh, take a look at the troubleshooting section of each guide. Um, and it should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, next, we have a, a reference section. So if you look into the reference section, you, you'll find um, all of our smart contract documentation um, written there. It's, it's uh, automatically generated from the comments in our source code. So you can see um, what the actual uh, smart contracts uh, uh, code looks like uh, in, the, in the reference section as well. And you'll also find like just all kinds of reference uh, documentation about the network. So for example, all of the contract addresses for the different um, contracts that we use, like the signal service, uh, Tyco L1, Tyco L2, you'll find all of those in the reference section along with all of the addresses for the ERC20 tokens. And you'll also find like um, the addresses for our proposer, because as we said, we we, we are doing the proposing um, for this test net, and you'll find the addresses for like our Oracle prover, our personal prover, um, and you'll find like RPC configuration. So basically any kind of like metadata, so to speak, about the network you can find there. And finally, we have like some uh, resources section where you can um, go through and, and, and find some other uh, useful educational resources. Um, so yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you, um, from the documentation set, you'll also be able to visit the different apps that we have. You know, we talked about how the bridge is one of the apps that we deploy on Tyco, but we also have a, um, a swap application, which is a, which is a fork of uh, Uniswap V2. Um, and finally, I just want to touch on, um, another, uh, app, so to speak, that's built on Tyco, which is the status. That's at status.a2.tyco.xyz. Uh, the link is also in the documentation. But that is to give you an insight onto what is like the current state of the network, right? Like um, when was like what's the proof reward? What's the last verified block ID? Things like that. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much the run through of the documentation. The one thing that I um, want to say is like um, all of the documentation. If you look to any page it'll say on the right like improve this page on github and you know we really try to spend a lot of effort to uh make this uh really easy for you to contribute to and improve so that like you uh the community like as us we all have like ownership over it so uh, definitely um feel encouraged to improve the documentation um you'll be able to if you look at our contributing guide you'll be able to earn a git poop um uh which is just like a cool cool badge that you can have and yeah we'd really uh, appreciate that and, and and encourage community contributions and also you'll find a feedback uh link at the top of the documentation that's where you can provide any feedback about your experience on the test net and, and we can use that to help improve going forward so yeah wish i could have shared my screen but oh well that's pretty much the run through uh, back to you, Matt. Thanks, Dave. Uh, you did a great job with without the visuals. Um, okay, I think we should let's jump right into questions. Uh, maybe we're going to talk about like the events and what's upcoming, but let's we're at the the, the halfway mark, so let's go uh, right into questions. So I think I'll pass to Ben, um, and he could go over some of the the pre-compiled ones. Uh, we'll keep a lookout for any others uh, that pop up in that channel on text. And uh, also, yeah, if you want to say something, a question, a comment, please raise your hand. Um, I, I think we could get you up here. So, Ben, please take it away. Okay, sure. Hi, everyone. 
Um, so firstly, um, thank you very much for all of the questions. I've tried to consolidate as many as possible to keep it all um, together. So let's quickly kick off with the very first question. And um, the very first question uh, being asked is, are there any special features unique to the Tyco network? So the question that this relates to is around the, uh, the test net. And um, we launched the test net a couple of days ago. And along with the launch, we issued a blog post. Um, within the blog post, we also highlighted some specific differences and uh, between our Tyco uh, test net alpha one and alpha two. And mainly the differences are um, in the alpha two is that we have ZKPs, uh, which are partially integrated. We now have provers in this one, which are completely permissionless, uh, whereas previously in um, alpha one, we had proposers. Um, in this test net as well, we have protocol economics enabled. Uh, we also have rewards for our provers um, in the form of a USDC compensation um, for a prize pool. And also uh, we have L1 Sepolia ETH implemented as well. And uh, this actually brings me on to the point around faucets. So for all those people who are asking um, around faucets, we actually don't have a faucet on our Discord. So um, you know, please use the documentation that we've supplied and obtain the um, Sepolia ETH directly from the Sepolia faucets themselves. Okay, that's the uh, very first question. Uh, does anybody want to add anything to this one? Uh, ben, I just want to add uh, some actual information there because for people who don't really know Tyco well, uh, I want to tell them that Tyco is really different from other layer tools in two uh, aspects. First, we want to be uh, as decentralized as possible, as permissionless as possible, right? That's the number one goal. Um, I think Justin Drake or somebody from um, Ethereum Foundation, a researcher, called it a based rollup, meaning that uh, in this rollup uh, block proposing or, or sequencing of transactions is it, really up to the Ethereum validators. It's not really up to any other uh, people. So so that's one thing. The other thing is really just a type one ZKEBAM, meaning that we are highly uh, equivalent with uh, the Ethereum uh, specification, not only the ZK, not the, only the EVM uh, specification. So those are like two very uh, bold uh, uh, in goals that we, we want to, um, we, we have, uh, different from other existing layer tools. Thank you, Daniel. Second question that we have is, um, why wouldn't you launch a future token reward system instead of the USDC reward that we're offering for the provers currently? Uh, I, I can take that question. And Brad, maybe you can, you can add extra um, comments. Um, this is because our we haven't really focused on tokens yet, and our tokenomic design is not really finalized yet. So it's really hard for us to predict in how um, token will work in the Tyco ecosystem. Um, so maybe maybe the next test net, maybe the you know the the fourth test net will enable uh, some test tokens to be distributed, but uh, uh, no guarantee. Uh, it really up to you know you know how the tokenomic design um you know how, how the implementation in how stable it is uh, but eventually yes uh as you know we never we never um deny this uh, this idea of having a token because as a decentralized network uh, if we don't really operate any official relayer or or sequencer there must be some kind of token there right so um it's on it's in our roadmap but uh, uh we we don't really talk about tokens nowadays with within the team so uh, maybe later uh, Brad, okay, i'll just i would also add something to that uh, is uh, because uh, it's also useful to actually test the the yeah the the whole 
uh, fee system up because if we just decide to give some kind of like token which doesn't have like any value, then yeah, so it doesn't really work to kind of like make use of the system in a realistic way because if you kind of like generate a proof, you have some costs to be able to do that. And so if you get something in return which you don't know the value of, then again, the system kind of like doesn't really work that well. Um, so in this case, it's also very helpful to, to actually test the system as it will be uh, instead of like, yeah, just being like very vague about things. Thank you. Next question is, do we plan to attract more investment to the project? Right, so um, it's, it's a good question. We, we haven't uh, shared info on this uh, publicly yet. Um, I think you could expect to hear some news on this front uh, shortly. Um, we, uh, you know, the, the capital needed to get to mainnet and beyond is is something we've uh, we've been covering and working on internally, and we, we feel we have that. We haven't shared news on it, um, but uh, quite soon we'll we'll share info. So please keep keep an eye out for that. Thank you, Matthew. Next question is, is there any change about the mainnet launch date? So um, earlier this month, we, or I should say Lisa, um, published the Tyco roadmap. And within the roadmap, we have various development stages. So um, in December, we had Alpha 1 testnet. Um, a couple of days ago, we released the Alpha 2 testnet um, with permissionless proposers, uh, sorry, permissionless provers. In um, Q2 slash Q3, we're going to be planning um, more testnets, and this will en enable permissionless proposers and permissionless provers as well. Um, and then that then will take us into Q3 and Q4. Uh, where we will be performing um, beta testing. And the aim then will be that we'll be planning for a launch of mainnet, or at least planning it um, in Q1 or early 2024. Anyone want to follow up on this one? Any more comments? Um, yeah, so we plan really optimistically right so everything works well then we will launch as soon as possible but uh, to launch a main night to maybe we don't it really depends on how you 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 label it right you can still say this is a beta test net but it's still on ethereum main net right so i think when we are ready to launch something on the main night of, of ethereum we need to make sure it's, it's um the most important code is audited. You know, we have um, good test coverage. We have good uh, zero knowledge proof coverage. Um, you know, uh, we have uh, a couple of test net running with the same code base uh, without issues. You know, there are some, uh, uh, you know, criteria we, we need to meet. Um, launching something to, to announce, hey, we have something and we are the first uh, uh, ZK uh, type one ZK EVM decentralized. It really doesn't make much sense to us. I mean, we we want to deliver something quickly to uh, our community, but we don't want to just do it as early as possible just to earn this this like um, you know uh, to, to to be proud to say we are the number one. Right? So something meaningful, something that people can use and developer can. Can you know deploy onto, um, and without a lot of you know downtime, um, that's something we want to uh, to to deliver. So as long as the code base is ready, and you will know it because you will notice that you know the the development is going to slow down a little bit. Uh, the PR is going to merge like less frequently. Uh, you will notice that. Hopefully, it's uh, early uh, next year. Yeah, Daniel, and I think that's a really good point because um, we need to make sure that the network is robust and secure. 
And I think this brings us on, up onto the next question, which is how will the operation of Tyco Network be guaranteed? So um, I, can share, I can share a little bit and Matthew and Bradley, you can all comment because this is like a, a big topic. Um, from from my perspective, you know, we just want to deliver open sourced uh, software that people can download, compile, and then run, and then become part of the network. A uh, Tyco never uh, is not our intent to run some official nodes or, or provers. You know, uh, we hope we operate Tyco. Quote operate. It's not really operate. We just. Uh, you know, we hopefully we, we, we operate Tyco just like Ethereum Foundation operates Ethereum, right? So, uh, you know, the, the open source code base is the deliverable that uh, we are going to offer to the community, not something, not some for profit uh, services. Um, yeah, that's my two cents. Uh, you, Matthew and Brad, uh, uh, you feel free to respond. Yeah, that's um, it, it's a good answer, Daniel. And I, and I think it's a good question. And it goes back to the first one of any special features unique to Tyco, which I also um, interpreted the same way as Daniel, which is besides like the type one goal, which um, as of right now is 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 unique versus our, our peers building other implementations, is the decentralized aim for proposers or, or sequencers, as some call it, and provers. So. Uh, the the guaranteeing of the operation of the network is um, will be a, a community effort. Anybody could progress the chain, you know, publish uh, some L2 batches to layer one as the data availability layer. So yeah, it's um, th that is unique to us. We don't want we're, we're not starting with a single sequencer with a plan for progressive decentralization. We're coming at it the other way. So I do think it, it's quite nice. Tyco has. Um, kind of two extreme points on two different trade-off axes is how, is how I kind of visualize it. And uh, combined, that's extra unique right now. Um, and that does lend itself to uh, an operation of the network without our participation. Um, so it'll be, it'll be very interesting to, to see because, I mean, we, we could talk more casually about it, but it was interesting yesterday with... Uh, the, you know, Arbitrum's airdrop, one of the bottlenecks was uh, the sequencer yesterday. Um, of course, in certain cases, there's, there's, it's fine to have a start with a single sequencer, but um, besides like the UI is going down under heavy load and uh, certain RPC providers going down, it was actually the sequencer that uh, was, um, was airing out for some people. So um, hopefully that would be something that our design decisions uh, kind of navigate because uh, there will be multiple sequencers. And if one can't handle a load, then, um, then others will. So uh, I find that particularly exciting. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure if anyone else wants to add to it. And maybe if, if not, I see we have some requests to speak. Um, maybe we could get, get to those, but... Um, um yeah and then and then go back to the to the written questions just to change it up a bit okay i've just invited daniel w to speak so daniel you're on the stage uh daniel you're on mute I wonder if this is uh, the Daniel W, who's very active on uh, on Twitter, always posting very nice memes. Uh, I don't know if that's you, Daniel. Daniel W. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Well, keep up the great work uh, on Twitter. I'm a fan of your work. Okay, let's try a different one then. Um, let's try Gazy. 
Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Welcome. Yeah, to yeah. Page. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just hopped on Psycho and um, discovered you guys on Testnet. So I was actually trying to make a swap. I breached and I was trying to make a swap, but I can't find my Psycho um, coins after I used the bridge. I don't know if there's any solution for that. Uh, I can probably answer that question. So a lot of people don't really understand how the bridge will work. Um, okay. The, the, the bridge actually, uh, in order to bridge into the other chain, uh, either from layer one to layer two or the other way around, actually there are two transactions. The first transaction is the that you, you deposit your uh, token on the source chain to the bridge contract or a, a token vault. And then a message is sent to the other chain. On the other side of the, the bridge, the, on, on the destination chain, uh, our relayer will help will help to help you to claim the token that you deserve. So that that's another transaction that we have to uh, 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 fire up and then and confirm. So sometimes there's a delay there, and if you never received that uh, the, the token you deposit destination chain, there's one possibility. Um, you maybe didn't pay enough uh, fee on the source chain, it's really unwilling to process your transaction. So you have to it yourself manually by go to the other type, uh, which represents the destination chain, and then click play or something. I cannot recall the exact uh, lay of the chain, and then you have to do it manually. So basically, two transactions for uh, cross chain transfers. But, uh, Hopefully, after you pay the relayer a, a reasonable fee, everything will be handled automatically at a repair uh, for you. So that's, yeah, uh, it maybe it's a little bit too technical, but that, that's mostly uh, the, the interaction there. So if you never receive the token there and you don't really see any record on the destination chain, let us know, uh, and then it will be a bug. But I don't think there is a, a bug there. But yeah, please, please try again with some fees. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the question. I'm going to try. I, I guess I'll just inc increase the slippage and I'm good. Yeah. Um, it, it, the slip is, is not the If you do a swap, that's another thing, right? If you do a, a Uniswap style, like a swapping, that's not cross chain. Uh, so my answer doesn't apply there. <laughs> Uh, so if it's a cross-chain uh, transfer, you know, uh, that's what I'm, uh, I was talking about. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Let, let's move back to the, uh, some technical questions that we had from the community. And it's really around, um, you know, what is the significance of the provers on the network and um, the hardware requirements? Because I'm, I'm guessing maybe some people uh, didn't have a chance to read up on the blog or they haven't had a chance to um, take a look at our website. So, you know, maybe, maybe Dave um, or somebody, you, you guys could um, just quickly go over some of the current hardware requirements for running a prover. Uh, yeah, I, I can uh, briefly go over it and let someone else add to it. So um, the significance of the provers is really like, um, you know, as we've said in the blog post as well, is like we allow for like this permissionless proving. Um, so anyone can run the prover software and we, you know, we, we, want, we want you to be able to like test it out, see if you're able to like um, run it correctly. And we the hardware requirements that we give out um, which is like eight or 16 core CPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM is kind of like the minimum reasonable requirements to generate a proof. I think, and, uh, this could be off, but I think it was in about like 50 minutes or something like that. Um, however, if you look in the documentation for enable approver, it's very likely that the, that hardware requirement, uh, might not be enough to, um, generate a proof because the, um, um, the stronger um, provers in the network that are competing to generate a proof 
uh, might win out. But uh, that being said, we really am kind of kind of like focused on that permissionless aspect and. Uh, you know, we have some ideas to address that as well. So you're able to like run a prover and, you know, that's like one of the, you know, big reasons why we, we've, we, we've, we've offered that. Um, so you can try it out. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the time and we have um, roughly about five minutes left. So um, let's quickly go over a few, a uh, few more uh, questions here. Um, some of them are around the actual proving hardware. So they were asking around, you know, what's the minimum requirements for um, a prover node? Are these hard limits? And in terms of the future, is there potential to accelerate ZK proving uh, with GPUs um, if they're available? Brett, so, we want to that one. Thing. Brett, yeah. I think you're, uh, I can't hear Brecht at least. Nope. Yep, I can hear you, Brecht. Um, let, let me try to answer, and Brecht can, can comment later. So, um, we only have a pretty small percentage of zero knowledge proof calories for the uh, for stories, for uh, execution signatures. So right now it's really just partial uh, ZKP coverage. So the numbers now doesn't really represent uh, the, the future. So it's really hard to predict exactly uh, what kind of hardware is required, but we feel like you know there will be a lot of memories, maybe uh, tens of gig of memories or even more. And uh, uh, I think, uh, powerful uh, uh, GPU uh, will be uh, required. Um, uh, by the way, if you run the prover now, you will notice that uh, the multi-core CPUs really not help a lot because the the, wisdom, the prover is not optimized for multi-core uh, CPUs. Um, um, the, so, so the once we have all the zero-based proof, the, the circuits integrated in one, we have a big idea, you know, the hardware required. But all that said, you know, the next protocol is we're going to enable a feature that will enable people to option exclusive right to proof a blog. Meaning that you know you can just say hey, I want to prove this block uh, I'm, I'm happy with the current payment, you know, give half an hour, let me prove it. We'll give you half an hour we really can we can prove it proof within five minutes or half an hour as long as it's within half our window, it's a deep, right? So by doing this, we allow people with um, like secondary hardware to still proof and early proof board. On the other hand, if you have really powerful machines and you say, okay, I can just prove every one minute, right? You still open uh, the print the right with lower reward because your cost is smaller, so you are willing to Accept a lower payment and then uh, you know, the the auction. So in general, I think our design, um, the 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 mentality is to allow people to prove the block, um, you know, without having to acquire the best hardware, um, as long as the proof is on average within a, a time window, you know, uh, it's okay because as we have repeated multiple times to. Everybody who who you know want to learn about Tyco, the proving time doesn't really affect uh, end end user experience, right? It's transparent to end users unless you want to do layer two to layer one like a withdrawal, um, which has other liquidity based solutions. So so in general, don't worry too much about the proving right. You don't have to be the best uh, hardware uh, uh, owner to prove a Tyco block in the future. But for this block. Is the winner takes all. So because the auction feature is not there yet. All right, that, and that's a really good point because um, in the community, um, at least for the Alpha Two currently, there have been a lot of questions around you know the hardware requirements and the best hardware winning. So um, it's good to know that for the future that this will actually be different. So thank you for the clarification there. 
Um, Breck, do you have anything to add there? I, I saw Breck rejoined. Uh, I missed something that Daniel said, and my connection. Okay, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just yeah, I'll not add, it, add, add anything because uh, I don't think my connection is stable enough. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, I think let's do this one last um, question. Um, would it be possible to calculate the proving time on a machine to benchmark performance? And can this already be done, or can a tool be developed for this? Let, let me try to answer it, but uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, so you can like, uh, so eventually it will be possible. But currently, um, there's like some some like optimization that are still pending, and also like not all circuits are are done yet. So you can kind of like test it out in like an unrealistic scenario, uh, which is already like quite useful to know, of course. Uh, but yeah, you cannot know like yeah, we we do not know yet like how expensive proving will be because like yeah, optimizations need to be done on the prover side, optimizations still need to be done on the circuit side. Uh, and like all, all like, everything needs to come together uh, to get like a, a realistic estimate of uh, okay what the hardware requirements will be uh, and like how long exactly the the proof generation will take at least like yeah so this is kind of like an estimate right so it's kind of like how long the proof generation will take with like the proving system that we are using but obviously other uh, developers or other uh, companies can like optimize their own prover and also generate proofs using their optimized prover for for the network um so so even numbers that come from us is just like an estimate from like one specific application on one one specific uh, hardware platform um yeah so it's uh yeah so the, so the goal is still like yeah so uh, the goal is to make it as cheap as po possible to to uh, generate proofs for blocks uh, and so like yeah, whoever can come up with the most efficient way to do it um okay it's 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 great for the network Thank you, Brett. So I see that we've got um, a few more questions um, in here from uh, the live audience. So let's quickly go and see what those are. Um, Gifty007, you're ready to speak. You there? I, do we need to add him to the stage? Yeah, I just did. Oh, okay. It's possible they raised their hand and then uh, we're waiting and are, are not right there yet. So maybe, I don't know if the invitation persists, but uh, maybe let's go to uh, Umedi. Uh, let's get uh, you up here. Okay, Umidi. Over to you. Hey, you're on the stage. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. No, I don't have anything anything uh, special to say. Just wanted to 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 say hi to everyone. And thank for uh, um, reading the Taiko Tuesday newsletter. Just very happy to be here. Very excited to be here. And uh, yeah, thanks for the call. And uh, yeah, guys, if you haven't uh, subscribed to, to Taiko Tuesday, do it now, please. <laughs> okay, back to you, Ben. No problems. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you really for all of your efforts as well. It's um... And you know, for all those who haven't actually read the newsletter, it makes a great summary of what Tycho has been doing each week. And um, it's also quite amusing as well. So it, it's a very lighthearted look on um, some serious technical stuff. So I recommend that you subscribe to his newsletter if you haven't done so already. Okay. Yeah, Next. Thank, thank you. I just wanna say thanks for your, your great effort. Um, uh, yeah, everyone should definitely subscribe. If anybody has something, else to shell up here you're you're welcome to do it as long as it's Tyco related feel free to shell anything you're working on uh educational apps tools um yeah Tyco related shells uh products of course uh yeah okay next one Nelsidos 
you're invited to speak if you come up on stage. Hey, you're on stage, Nel Cedos. I hope I've pronounced it correctly. Yeah, yes, yes, we can't hear you. It's, it seems like maybe a lot of people don't uh, give permission maybe to Discord to access their mic, even if they unmute themselves. I don't know if it's as simple as that, but uh, um, okay. we'll keep it going well, quickly, though. We're at the hour let's mark. Go to, yeah. Let's go to VIP then. VIP, you're on stage. Or you're invited to speak if you go come on the stage. No, okay. Next one then. Achin, you're invited onto the stage. No. Next one then is MZTA Cat. You're on stage. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I do hear me yes we can yeah. be fine um i've actually been following taiku for for a while now and um i followed it down to when we claimed the poop and to the um axe j i'll be hard, sorry how do i pronounce it is released um recently i don't know from my research on the project i didn't properly get um the funding I don't know if it's um, kind of a private funded or maybe it's going to be a public funding or something because seeing other projects um, like the likes of Layer Zero, Asacnet, Scroll, and the rest of them, I can see the funding, but when it comes to Taiko, I don't know if um, it will be released later or if um, it's not something we have to talk about or something. That still confuses me. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, it's it's definitely a fair one. We actually uh, mentioned it before from one of the written questions. It's not something we've shared info on yet, but we will soon. Um, I think you could expect something um, in the not too distant future. We'll release some info on uh, how we have um, you know any capital that's been uh, infused and 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 funding uh, considerations. So. Please stay tuned and um, yeah, fair fair question. Thanks for that. That's just all I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think then let's take one last question. Um, Daniel W is back. So Daniel, you're back on the stage and you're on mute. Let's hope it works. No. no. He said in the chat he tried with headphones, but apparently still not. Okay. Um, all right, all right. So I think that's that's it for um we'll, we'll we'll see if there's a better way to do voice stuff next time. Maybe some of us will know we have to check our mics uh who knows what the problem is? Um, just one thing, it's a written question. I think it's it's worth saying because many of you have been waiting for it. The question was um, just related to the, the POAP. Um, of course, that was very popular in the first test net. Uh, we really appreciate everyone who, who did, you know, the the necessary transactions and and uh, earned um, the POAP. We're, uh, as I think we've signaled, we want to release it on Alpha 2 testnet. Uh, that's kind of one of the main points. So now that that's live, we're going to make progress on that. Um, many of you have seen the list. So the uncertainty as to whether you uh, will get that kind of commemorative badge has been sorted. Um, we appreciate your patience on waiting for the delivery of it. Um, now that the testnet is out, we'll, we'll make moves on it. And um, yeah, just one clarifying thing. 
we we initially called it a POOP. A POOP is kind of like one implementation of these commemorative NFT badges. Um, we j just to not be you know not to cause more confusion. The the generalized state of it is just like an NFT. Uh, it might not be a POOP. It might not be an OAT, which is something we mentioned. Uh, we just want to make sure that all the participants have this um, this this keepsake, this badge that they've earned. So uh, I think it's fine. Like POOP becomes the the generic term, kind of like Kleenex maybe in this in this case for tissue paper. But uh, I just don't want to cause anyone confusion. Um, but we will certainly make moves on that. Um, yeah, I see, I see questions in the chat, like where to claim, just stay tuned. We haven't forgot it. The test net's been live 48 hours now and we'll, we'll get it going. So, um, all right. I think that's, that's all the questions. Um, does anybody on stage have anything else to say? Farewell. Um, any, anything else from, from the teammates or speakers up here? Okay, maybe that that's it. But please, anyone, uh, you know, cut me off if you have something to say. I just want to say thanks again to everyone attending. And when I when I give some of these shout outs, I'm um, really we're all grateful for for everybody that helps out and is active. Um, I scroll through the list. I don't know how it works for everyone else, like who it shows, who it populates towards the top. Those are the people I think specifically. But as I scroll down. I see many more uh, people um, that that deserve um, our gratitude. I see a lot of loop head avatars in here. I see a lot of people that engage with us, uh, help spread the word on Twitter, help um, educate each other on Discord. So um, it's a really heartfelt thank you from from all of us. Um, it's it, it's honestly what keeps the team uh, really excited is to build for. Uh, for all of you. So thank you so much. And I guess the final thing I'll say is, is this format the best? Uh, could we improve it? Let's let's discuss it in the Discord. Um, maybe we, we flip it on its head. Maybe it becomes somewhat more of a, of a casual chat where we could discuss even like industry at large um happenings uh you know general roll up stuff zk stuff maybe maybe it's similar to like the uh the office hours that um uh we hosted uh, a week or so ago so please um we, we we could definitely improve this so uh yeah um on that note, I think we can wrap it up. Um, thank you everyone again. This was awesome. Call number two, test net number two in the books. Oh, I should, we should, should say one thing. Sorry to drag on here. One of the agenda items we skipped just to get to the questions was some planned events um, in real life or virtual. So happening right now is scaling ethereum it's actually coming up towards its, its tail end i think project submission is due within the next few days maybe tomorrow maybe today and then results uh, on, on the 29th so if you're building um there's some prizes for dApps some infrastructure tooling some uh some zk circuits for the extra ambitious and some uh, protocol economics which is a, a kind of a no code option so scaling ethereum um you could participate there's five days left um but maybe less for submission the next big one for us which is quite exciting is eth tokyo uh that's happening in about three weeks um eth tokyo is an eth global hackathon uh there'll be plenty of side events before and after um much of the Tyco team is planning on on going we're going to have our kind of team off-site many of us will meet for the first time in person uh it'll be really fun um we will be 
kind of uh, high level sponsors. Uh, so that means like kind of more hackathon prizes, more of a presence. We're really excited. It'll, uh, in some sense, it'll be a, a big uh, event for, for Tyco. So anybody who will be at ETH Tokyo, uh, it would be awesome to, to meet you and uh, stay tuned for like some of the, the specific events that we'll share before that. Um, and uh, I just want to say it was also great meeting many of you in Denver uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, that was our kind of our first real live event, and uh, the the reception uh, to Tycho was great. It was Terence, Dave, and myself that were there, and uh, we met many of you. It was it was the highlight of our trip was um, having many of you come by the booth, and uh, thank you for that. Um, anything to add there on the events team or or anybody? Uh, yeah, I just have one quick thing, uh, not to drag on too long either uh, about like the scaling ethereum and these hackathons and everything and i think someone also asked like any cool like dApps or contracts deployed on tyco um just wanted to like let you know that um, we have a showcase page on the tyco website but really you can think of it in the in a large way <laughs> as, as your website to some degree right like you can create your project or build your thing and open a PR to be put to that showcase. And I don't really think we'd be doing any filtering on it unless it's just something crazy or like, you know, um, but yeah, so if you, if you want to build, like, of course, we're really um, happy to help, um, you know, make sure um, help, help you out in, in order to deliver something. And then also you can get some visibility on our showcase page as well. So um, definitely encourage anyone to like, deploy some dApps and, and get it on there. Uh, but yeah, that's all I had. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah, let's fill up that showcase page. Uh, I see a few people um, saying thanks uh, for this. Thank you, Fair Montiel. Thank you, everyone. Um, OK, that is it. We'll wrap it up. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.